The book of Ruth. Ruth chapter 1. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled. That's what we just read, judges. So somewhere, it doesn't give us exact time. Between Judges 1 and Judges 21 is the book of Ruth. There was a famine in the land. Nowhere in the book of Judges is there a famine mentioned. And yet, only principal parts were Bethlehem and Judah. And a certain man, certain man which the Bible is going to name, and it's a real man. So the book of Ruth already starts with a few words by a certain man. God, the Holy Spirit, has said this book is true. It's not a parable. It's not a story. Of Bethlehem, Judah. Now there are two Bethlehems. And we're looking at the Bethlehem that's specifically in Judah. And this is the birthplace that will be, it hasn't happened in the book of Ruth yet, David, and then later the Lord Jesus Christ. Went to sojourn. Sojourn is a journey. And according to what you would read, it's two days or less. And that's interesting. Because in the mind of this man, it's only going to be a few days. Honey, pack up the kids, pack everything up. For a few days, we're going to go away and avoid this famine. Went to sojourn the country of Moab. Now Moab, in Genesis 19.37, he is one of the children by Lot's daughter after the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah in the neighboring cities. And born out of the incense and getting their father drunk is the application and the foundation of Moab. And the laws prescribe don't you go to Moab, don't you do any harm to him because you are family. Don't evade their land. I've given Moab their land. I have given Israel their land. And Moab, when you look down at a map of the Middle East, he's, he's down east of the Jordan River from the Dead Sea up. And then you get uh, half tribe Manasseh, uh, Reuben, and I think God, I forget the two and a half tribes. They sat on the wrong side of the land. And then you get Amon, the other, the brother of Moab. So what he's doing, he is going the wrong way in the Bible. He's going from west to east. And when you find a particular direction in the Bible, the particular right direction is east to west. Now, if you got to go from the East Coast to, I mean, if you got to go from the West Coast, California, to, for, to Virginia, I'm not surprised you go all the way around the world. But you would find a personal time in the, in the children of Israel, East to West. They came from the East side of Jordan, across the Jordan, East to West. That would be proper for them. He went to sojourn the country of Boab, so he's leaving Israel and going to Moab. He and his wife and his two sons. Now there's no mention of prayer. And whatever the circumstances is, his wife and his children go. And there's no hostileness. There's no argument. We're going. She goes. And I got a note here. 2 Kings 8.1 2 Kings 8.1 And again, we got another famine. And when famines happen in the Bible, the primary subject is God's judgment. 
It says, Then he then spake Elijah unto the woman. There's a man and a woman. Whose son, there's a son. He had restored to life, saying, Arise and go thou in thy household, and sojourn. What is thou thou canst sojourn? For the Lord has called for a famine. It shall be also come upon the land seven years. Well, here he says sojourn, and he's telling her seven years. And the woman arose and did after the saying the man again. So she obeys, just like Ruth and like her sons. Go. And they go. And we read in 2 Kings 8, it says seven years. We don't know how long this famine is. We don't even know where in the book of Judges the famine is. Sometime. But remember, when you look at the book of Ruth, Judges 21, 25, in those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. We got a famine? Dear, let's pack up and leave God. And that's what he's saying. We'll go to the world. We'll go to the bank. We'll go get a loan. We'll go get to the credit card. We'll go get a mortgage. But we're not going to pray. We're not going to turn to God. Now, when God went to that woman in 2 Kings 8, God took care of her. And the name of the man was Eliminate. That means God is king. That Eli, that's God. Well, God's not king in his life. Let's run. Let's get out of here. Let's leave God's land and defend for ourselves. And the name of his wife, Naomi, which means pleasant. Pleasant. The name of his two sons, Milhan, which means sick, and Chilion, which means pining, hazard, sickly. So you would maybe assume that these children were born during the, 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 uh, uh, the famine. And if that's the case, he's describing this famine. It, man, it's just sick and we're, we're dying. We're wasting away. We got to get out of here. Ephraimites. Now Ephraim, Ephra, E-P-H-R-A-T-H. That's a place. In Benjamin Judah of Bethlehem and they're Ethelmite they are of that place of Bethlehem and let's see Genesis 35 19 Genesis 35 19 and this runs to prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ because Ruth is full of Jesus Christ and I said, Genesis 35, 19. If my voice don't sound right, I, I'm not, I'm just giving me ear problems, but I, I'm hearing myself echo. In 35, 19, and Rachel died and was buried in the way to Ephraim. There it is. Now being Ephraimites means they are living in Ephraim. And what is Ephraim? Which is Bethlehem. And that's an area of, uh, of Benjamin. That's where Benjamin was born. And it came into and they came into the country of Moab and continued there. We're staying. Settling down. Now that woman in 2 Kings 8, seven years, mark my calendar, seven years, God says, I'm going to go back home. And Elimelech, Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. Well, in verse 1 it says, went to sojourn. Elimelech never planned on dying in Moab. That was not his plan. He planned to go to Moab, survive, and come back. 
He never made it. He died. And what she was left. Now she's in charge of the family. And her two sons. Whatever reason Limenick left, he does not come back, and now everything falls upon his widow, his wife. Now, sick and piney, if that's not the reason of the famine, and that describes her children, she is left with two children that are just need to be taken care of. She is left. She's in charge of the family now. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. How long have they been there? Now they're looking at the women that are not Jewish. In violation of the Jewish marriage law, they are looking at women that God completely said not to marry with. And they go and marry women that are outside the law. Because their father left God into the world and died. There is no fatherly figure in this family anymore. And now the children go out and you got cross marriage. You got the children of God married to the children of heathen. And that's never good. And that's even profane. And that's even prohibited in the New Testament by Paul writing to the Corinthians. A woman has liberty to marry only in the Lord. And the name of the one was Ophrah. Now that is what I am told the original name of Ophrah. Having a Baptist background and defying God and Jesus Christ completely, she changed her name. That's what I'm told. But it's wonderful how this woman leaves God, and that's what her story is. I'll just change my name, so I, I don't know. That's, that's what I'm told. I could be wrong. But Ophrah. Ophrah means pined or fawn, a little deer. And the name of the other, the story, the main character of this book, Ruth. Ruth friendship or beauty and what more beautiful to the eyes of Jesus Christ who is the most beautiful ever to be according to the song of Solomon the bride of Jesus Christ there is no other beauty in the eyes of Jesus Christ but his bride now Ruth will take the characteristics of the church in relationship to Jesus Christ now, Ruth at one time was married to a Gentile, was married to a person not affiliated with God at all, Satan, the world. You have your father, the devil, John 8, 44. But let's look at Ruth, chapter 4, verse 9. Let's look at her husband. We're allowed to jump ahead. 4, 9. We are given the name of her husband. And Boaz said unto the elders, and unto all the people, Ye are witnesses this day, that I have brought all that was in Limenech, and all that was Chillins, and Millens, in the hand of Naomi, and more Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of Milan. So Ruth marries Milan, the one that was sick. You know, when you marry to the world, you're married to something that's sick. And I was speaking to a guy today. When Jesus Christ came, they were cursed. They were diseased. They were blind. They were deaf. They were maimed. They were sick. And there was no healing for the children of Israel until the Messiah came and healed them. And he told them impossible things. Stretch out to your hand to a man that could not stretch out his hand. What do you see for a man that is blind? When you're married to the world, it's sick. And the world will die. 
the other route, and they dwelled there about ten years. So, ten Gentile. That's an interesting number of all the years. They did not, listen, when they sat down and married these women, they didn't say, okay, wait a minute, we got to live one more year because it's, 10 is a Gentile year. No, they had no idea. They've done what they've done, and yet they've done it according to the scriptures of the Holy Spirit that would write the scriptures that has not been written yet. 10 is a Gentile number. They're Jewish. And yet now, and Milan and Chilin died, also both of them. So now the book takes a characteristic turn of three women, two Moabitesses and a Jewish woman. The men are all gone. And both of them, and the women was left of her two sons, and then died. Milan died, and both of them, and the women were left of her two sons and her husband. There's no family left. No blood family left. At all. Poverty. Women could not go get a job. Women did not have equal rights. So with all that, then she would be Naomi, arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord visited his people in giving them bread. Famine's over. The, the media, the press, the newspaper, going all the way to Moab, there's bread in the land of Israel. And she gets word of it. And she's now, all right, let's go back home. Jesus Christ said, I'm the bread of life. She's going back into her land to get bread to live. And Jesus said, I am that bread. I am that bread that will give you life. God gives that bread. Man doesn't give you the bread. The man bread man gives you, you eat it, you're going to die. The bread that God gives that is Jesus Christ, you'll be satisfied. You're given eternal life. You'll be peace and joy and love, long suffering as you walk this earth, even among the troubles. Wherefore she went forth out of the place, wherever they were in Moab, where she was. Her two daughters-in-law with her. And they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. All right, I'm going home. I came with three men in my life. My husband, my two sons. They are dead. They are gone. I've got two daughters-in-law. And I don't even know how the Jews are going to respect these two women. Because they're Gentiles. Ask Jonah and Peter what they thought about Gentiles. In the time that there was no king and everyone did that was right in their own eyes. And they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. Going back home. And not, Could this possibly have happened during um, Gideon? Because they were hiding, like, Gideon was hiding in the, the rushing for the wine press. Where was that? Um, because that speaks about the enemy taken. Judges 6. Judges 6. On that chapter, uh, verse 11. Uh, yeah. 11? Hiding, he's hiding in the wine press threshing wheat. To hide, it from, to hide it from the Midianites. In other words, what, they, what, what the Midianites would do, they'd come in after the crop was ready, pull all the crops. That would cause a famine for the for the Jews, but not for the, all the people of the land. Yeah, it could be too. I mean, yeah, like you said, there'd be no food for the Israelites because yeah. the nation of Israel it could be. And he could have fled because the enemy. I mean, we're just not told where. 
So they're going back to Judah. They're getting back to God. She's smart. At the hearing of the word of God, the bread of God, I'm going to get that bread. If only the Jews would do that today. And Naomi sent her two daughters-in-law. Now this is where it gets bad. Go return each to her own to her mother's house. You mean the wicked, the idolaters, the mother that has all the gods? Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots. Go back to that mother. That is poor advice. She should have told her daughter, come to the father of the Israelites. Come to the father of the Jews. A God that's merciful and forgiving. And maybe he'll give you his mercy. No, but get out of here. Go. She is turning them away from Jehovah. Her God. The Lord Jehovah, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, deal kindly with you in Moab. With false gods? You mean the children of incense? That had nothing to do with God? That would not allow the Jews passage into their land? The Lord do well with you? As ye have dealt with the dead and with me. Now look at that characteristic. She, she Naomi tells her daughter, you took care of my boys. You were proper, well wise. And even now you've taken care of me. You've helped me. All three of us are widows, and you too have been a wonder to me. You've been a help. So even in the start of chapter 1, we see the characteristics of Ruth. And they don't stop. Naomi gives the poor advice. The Lord that Jehovah grant you I always say the Lord Jehovah, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital O. I'm not trying to teach any false doctrine. But as far as the Jew, in the Old Testament, where we are, that's Jehovah. Grant you that ye may find rest. Each of you in the house of her husband. Go get another wife. Go have your husband. Isaiah 48, 22. Isaiah 48, 22. This is terrible advice. You know, Moab will be wiped off the map. Isaiah 48, 22. God says, There is no peace, save the Lord, unto the wicked. Uh-oh. How about... 53, uh, was that 52, 21? Maybe 53. 52, 21. I'll read my own writing. 52, 21. That's impossible. 53, 21? That's impossible, too. Boy, I don't know. 57. Try that one. Yeah, 57, 21. 57, 21. Again, there is no peace, saith the Lord, God, my God, to the wicked. She's sending them back to a bunch of wicked heathen. And you're going to have rest? Peace? Absolutely not. God's G-O-D-S. Naomi knows how God feels about the heathen and how he feels about, at least she should know. According to the law, if she knows the law. And we'll find out she does. Each of you in your house of your husband, go back and marry a heathen. Go back and marry someone who's got gods. Then she kissed them. And they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people, Jewish. Now, they got more sense than she does, Naomi. We're going to go back with you. We're going to take care of you. We're going to go back to your people. 
And it's not because the famine's over, but we're going to fall. There's something about these two boys. That they took care of their wives and they brought their wives up in God. In the ways of the Jewish people that these women say, hey, we don't want to go back to the Moabites. There's something about you guys. There's something about you Jews that we want. How are you about that, Christian? And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Because you're God. Are there yet any more sons in my womb? That they may be your husband? A physical appeal. I mean, if I were to get pregnant now, turn again, my doors, go your way. For I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband also tonight, and should also bear sons, would you tarry for them till they are grown? At least, what, 18, 19 years? Would you stay for them having husbands? Would you wait for my boys to raise, to grow up? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your father, for your sake that the hand of the Lord is going out against me. Chastening. God hates me. And that's why she's not telling these girls the proper way. She's angry with her God and she thinks God's angry with her. Will you wait? For me to have sons. And yet Judah told Tamar, you wait for my older son to grow up. You go back to your father's house and you be a widow. And when my son's old enough, you will take him to be your husband, which doesn't happen. Judah takes her by an act of whoredom. That's in the line of Jesus Christ. That's in the book of the Bible. And that produces Pharaohs. That's the story of Pharaoh. But, okay, there was already a son being born. Naomi right now is fruitless. Except the God of Israel will intervene. And God's going to do something more and above. Giving Naomi a husband. And giving her children. She, he's going to give Ruth a husband. And Ruth is going to inherit the Jewishness. Ruth is going to inherit by Boaz the line of Jesus Christ. By Boaz, Ruth is going to have something even greater than what Naomi can do. She is going to be a grandmother, great-grandmother, great-great-grandmother of the king of the Judah reign. And be the great-great-great-great-great, whatever and how many greats of Jesus Christ. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Naomi couldn't do that. Naomi forgot the power of God. Naomi forgot that God can open up that Red Sea and dry that ground. And not only the Red Sea, he can also do it the Red Sea. That he can wipe out the enemies of Israel and give Israel victory. She forgot about that. But God's against her. So she said, chastening. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Ophrah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. That means she stuck to it. She gave as part as Naomi. Ophrah pitches a Christian willing to take all they can, but not willing to press on at any cost. Also represents the grace extended, but rejected, and never to be heard of again. Ruth gets the inclination by her husband, and same as over the great God of the Jews. And Ruth is like, I want to be part of it. I want to be part of your people. So does Oprah. Ruth is willing to give it all up. Leave Moab, leave her family, leave her gods, leave her fa uh, the, 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 the nativity of where she was born, where she was grown, and go to God. A new life, a new way. 
Ultra, bye. See you later. Going back home. Bye. See you later. And you never, ever, ever read about Ultra, whatever happened to her again. Never. And it's weird that she's named. Usually in those cases, they're not named. So Ofra kissed her daughter-in-law, but Ruth claimed under her. And she said, Now what? Behold, thy sister-in-law has gone back unto her people. The Moabites. G-O-D-S. Heathen. Wickedness. And what? And unto her gods. There it is. There was something about Ofra. She said, I'm going back to my gods. Forget your god." Return thou after thy sister-in-law. So we know we're speaking of Ruth. We know we're talking about Ophra. And the testimony of Naomi, she's going back to her gods. She wants nothing to do with Jehovah God. And we've all dealt with family members. Friends. Kinship. People. When they're given the opportunity to follow Jesus Christ or follow the gods of the world, bye, see you later. Hope it works for you. My, you know, don't judge me no more. Don't talk to me no more. I don't want to have anything. Bye. And unless they get, don't get right, unless they do not repent and get right to Jesus, you'll never hear about them ever again, except for the great white stone judgment. Ever again. And the lake of fire, they'll be nameless. She said, Behold, thy sister-in-law has gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister. Now, is that great advice or is that horrible advice? That's wicked advice. And do you know how many Christians, and I don't, I'm going to say Christians, that will say that to another say, you know, come join me in the world. Come to our worldly church. We get many people come up to, well, come to our church, and when they explain to our church, they say, hey, no church. That's a club. It has nothing to do with God. And Ruth, thank God for Ruth being why she is, entreat me not to leave thee. Shut up, Naomi. Stop it. You're not talking right. Or return from following after thee. Naomi, you are my example. You are elder than I am. And I am to follow you. Stop acting like this. Because you're not adhering to your God. You're not adhering to the elderness of who you are. You're not giving good advice right now. For whither thou goest, I will go. Where is she going? She's going back to the land of Israel. Because God has provided bread. Ruth's going, I want to go back to Israel where God's giving the bread. And I don't think I'm talking about physical bread. Whatever God has to offer in Israel, Ruth wants it. She is seeking God. She may not know, and she doesn't have any idea who God is. I stood at that point as a young man, Catholic, grown up in gods, but not knowing God. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Naomi, you have the eldership in yourself that where you go, I will follow because I believe you're going to do right. Do you see how much respect Ruth has for this woman that is her mother-in-law? It ain't that mean, nasty mother-in-law that, you know, that, you know, I can think of other things, how people think about their mother-in-law. That's not Ruth. There is something about this family of Ruth, the boys and the father, that Ruth says, I want that. And they're backslidden condition. And Ruth is fine. You know what? I'm going back to where God is. 
And Ruth is, I want to go. Naomi's no go. Get out of here. <laughs> That's poor advice, Naomi. That is very poor advice. That's not the real you speaking. Thy people, Jewish, shall be my people. Apostolizing. She wants to be a Jew. She's tired of Moabitishness. She's tired of Moabite gods. She wants a Jewish God. Watch. And thy God. Not and God. Talking to Naomi says thy God. Naomi's bitter. And she'll tell you in a few chapters. I mean verses. She is angry with God that her sons and her husband are dead. She thinks it's chastisement. She thinks God hates her. And Ruth has seen the true Naomi, the God that she served, the God that she loved before her sons died. And Ruth has learned from Naomi, I want that God. And Naomi, you're just going through a pity patty right now. So when we see Naomi in chapter 1, She's angry. She's bitter. She's lost her two children. She has no hope. She's in the world without God as a Jew. And if she were to die in this state, she, uh, according to the Old Testament, would probably die and go to hell. But she wants to go back where God will feed her. Thy God, my God, and who's the God? The God of your people, Jewish. Of all gods, I want to be a Jew, and I want the Jewish God. Look at that. Capital G. Where thou diest, will I die. In the land of Israel. Because I believe she thinks Naomi's not going to ever do this again. She's not going to leave that land once she gets in there. Because she left the land, her sons died, her husband died. And there will I be buried in the land of Israel. Remember, that's the land, that's where God is, that's where the Ark of the Covenant is, that's where the brazen altar is, that's where Jehovah is. And if you want Jehovah, you have to go with Israel. You have to go talk to the Israelites. You got to seek the Levite. You got to do what the law prescribes, even if you're Jew. I mean, Gentiles, excuse me. And the Gentile here, Ruth, wants to know, wants to do, wants everything to do with the Jewish God. And she's looking to Naomi right now. And properly and presently and politely, she's putting Naomi down like, that's not you. We need to get moving. And remember, Ophel just left too. We don't know how much, we don't know that the kinship, and there was love and kinship between the in-laws here, the mother-in-law and the daughters-in-law. Three men have died, and now one woman's going back into the world. And I don't think Naomi's trying to get rid of Ruth, like, you're a pest, you, you, you just get out of here, I don't want anything. No, just if you go with me, God's going to curse you. If you go with me, God's going to kick your butt. If you go with me, God hates, will hate you. Because God hates me now. And we'll see that. The Lord, Jehovah, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital E, do so to me. Now that's what Naomi's afraid of. If God hates me right now, he's going to hate you. And more also, whoa, if aught but death part thee and me. If I leave you right now, Naomi, God's going to do worse to me than he's done to you. He throws it, she throws it right in her face. Do you think of death of your two sons and you think the death of your husband is trouble? If I leave you right now, God's going to do worse to me. I want, look, look at that free will. I want to go. I want to be a part of it. I'm talking today about free will. He says there is no free will. 
Is Naomi fate forcing her? Is the Holy Spirit forcing her? Absolutely not, because Ophra went back. And Ruth says, I want to go. Now, don't you think God's going to work in Ruth's heart with her, her, her ambition? And when she saw that she was steadfastly, <laughs> there's no stopping her. <laughs> Look at 1 Corinthians 15, 58. You know, I would love to meet somebody like this. I would love to have somebody come up to me and say, I want to serve your God. I want to get saved by your God. And I say, well, get out of here. I ain't got the time packing up. No, I got to have your God. I wish somebody come up to me like that. <laughs> you had to pick me off the ground. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Here this is the New Testament. Here is Ruth. Therefore, my beloved. Isn't she a beloved? Brethren. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Isn't that Ruth? For as much as ye know that your labor, isn't that Ruth? It's not in vain. She didn't realize, but Moab, uh, Moab uh, Boaz, <laughs> Moab, Boaz is watching her and keeping his eye on her through his servant. And that servant brings a good report to Boaz about her. And that's what starts the whole story off. Oh, if I only vote here. 1521, I don't know what book that is. Matthew 1521. That is Ruth right there in the New Testament. I don't know if Paul had that in mind as Ruth, but there she is. Now I hope this is it. I need to write better. Matthew 1521. I'm a lousy, I'm going to say another word. I'm a lousy writer. My writing's like a, a chicken that stepped in the ink pad and water walking away. Matthew 15. Matthew 15. Matthew 15. What did I think? 15, 21. Matthew 15, 21, I hope. All right, yep. But Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre, Gentile, and Sidon, Gentile area. Behold, a woman of Cana, Gentile, came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord. Capital L. Thou son of David, God, King of Kings, my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered not a word. And his disciples came and saw him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out, Get this Gentile out of here, will you? Go make us look bad. But he answered and said, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Naomi. I'm a Jew, you're a Gentile, get out of here. Ruth, leave me alone. Go back. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Ruth, but where you go, I'm going to go. I'm not leaving. I'm staying. He, She is pestering. She is pestering the Lord. But he answered, it is not me to take the children's bread. Oh! Isn't that an interesting word? Ruth 1? And cast it to the dog. Who's that dog? Ruth. Gentile. She said, I'm offended what you said, Lord. I'm going to hate you. Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs. You realize Ruth ate the crumbs of the Jews? She got the remaining of the harvest after the harvesters went through, didn't she? Wouldn't that be crumbs? Isn't that the story of Ruth? Which fall from the master's table, Boaz? Then Jesus answered and said, O woman, great is thy faith. Great is the faith of Ruth. Be it unto thee, even as that will. 
and her daughter was made whole. Here's a woman pestering like Ruth is pestering. I ain't leaving you. T tell her to go away. And she heard it. She said, I I'm not taking care of I'm not going to say a word. Lord, help me. Hey, listen. Jewish people only, okay? Lord, I need your help. And don't we get the crumbs from the bread from the table? And Jesus, okay. Ruth said, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm just stop it. Shut up. I'm going. All right, come on. Let's go. When she saw steadfastly, minded to go with her. Then she left speaking. Of, okay, that's it. Let's go. And can you just imagine at this point, you're going, Ruth is putting her arms around Naomi. Come on, we both had dead husbands. We've both been forsaken. And it may be just silence all the way. I don't know. There's times to be silent and times to speak, the Bible speaks. So they too went until they came to Bethlehem. Boom, right to Bethlehem. And it came to pass when they were come to Bethlehem that all the city, all the city, was moved about them, 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 not just Naomi, them. And they said, is this Naomi? You ready for this one? Are you ready for this one? There's a prodigal girl coming home. And they're all happy. Here she is. Now they had no idea what happened to her son. They had no idea what happened to her husband. They have no idea who this woman is that she's walking with. But here's Naomi. And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi. Huh? That must have been a, what? You're Naomi. I, we know you're Naomi. Can you imagine that? Imagine your friend going away and they come back to you. you go, uh, Hi, Donna. <laughs> don't, don't call me Donna no more. Why? What's going on? I know who you are. It's been many years. I know who you are. It's been over 10 years. Call me Mara. Now, do you know where else that word showed up? In the beginning journeys of Israel, when they came to the waters that were bitter, they called it Mara. Bitter. Ugh. So there is a Hebrew word that God wants you to know. Do you want to know Hebrew and Greek? God says Mara. That's a good Hebrew word for you to know. What's that word mean, Lord? What is the importance of Mara? Bitter. Uh. You mean I couldn't just cry out with the tongues of Hebrew? Holy God, no, 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 bitter. The Hebrew word I want you to know in Hebrew, I want you to know bitter. There it is. Isn't that great? So you see, she's bitter against God in her own testimony. For the Almighty. Now how many times have we seen this since Genesis 1? has dealt very bitterly with me. It's God's fault. God's chastising me. God is cursing me. God hates me. God is just, you know what? He's just, don't call me. Don't call me pleasant no more. Call me bitter. Now we can see why Naomi did not want her daughter's laws to go? Because she's angry with God. And if you're not witnessing God, if you're not witnessing Jesus Christ, check your bitterness. Check your relationship with God. You may have a problem with God and God not having a problem. Watch. And she's going to go on first. All they say is, Naomi! And she opens up and complains and tells her story. Don't call me Naomi. Call me bitter. I went out full. I went out of Bethlehem full. I had a husband and two boys. And the Lord has brought me home again empty. Now she's not complaining. Let's get this right. This is a true story. She left with three men. And she's come back with none. But she's not empty. She's got the future 
woman that will be the grandmother again of David and the grandmother of Jesus Christ. Naomi will be in the line of Jesus Christ by Ruth and Boaz. But she's not empty, is she? You want to look to the left, Naomi, or the right? I don't know. Left or right? I don't know where. Isn't there somebody there with you? Isn't there somebody maybe got your arms around you or got your hand held? Isn't there somebody? You're not empty. You're with Ruth. And when we get to Ruth, one, two, three, four. What a wonderful woman you got there. Her husband left God. Ruth will not leave God. Why then call me Naomi? Well, that's your name. Duh. <laughs> Seeing the Lord has testified against me, God's fault, and the Almighty has afflicted me. Maybe afflicted your husband for doing what he did. Not against you. Aren't you coming back alive? Hasn't God given you a, a wonderful companion? I'm not talking about sexual. I'm talking about a, a good best friend that one day you are going to nurse her baby? Which at the end of the book will be the line again of David and Jesus? Wouldn't Naomi, wouldn't you have a great story in heaven to say, the great, great, great grandchild, the father of David and Jesus Christ, I held in my bosom. And who knows? I don't know if it's in, let's see, chapter 4. That's what, chapter 4. Chapter 4, Ruth 4. Let's see. All right, verse 17, Obed, Jesse, and David. I could quite assume, I'm, I'm assuming, that maybe Ru, uh, Boa, I mean, Naomi, I don't know how old she is. Would you maybe assume with me that Naomi would have an opportunity to change David's diaper? Wouldn't you? Wouldn't that maybe be a joy in heaven, that giant killer? Well, you should have had the poopy he had. You should saw the cute little dimples he had. You should saw where he played. You know that well of water that he talked about that his mighty men went and got a drink of it? You should saw the things that he did there. Oh man, I tell you, all those birds he killed with his rocks. What an empty, why call me Naomi, seeing that the Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has afflicted me? She's bitter. She's angry with God. So Naomi returned. And Ruth the Moabitess, see, she's still a Moabitess. She still got that title. Notice M O A B I T E S F. Don't mess with words in the Bible. Because the Bible says the Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Is that what the law says? It says nothing about an M O A B I T E S S. You see, God said, don't put S S in the law. But when you get to the book of Ruth, put S S. Because she's going to be allowed to come in. Isn't God great? Doesn't God know how to spell? Don't mess with the Bible. Her daughter in law with her. She returned out of the country of Moab. That's her testimony. That is, all right, Naomi's testimony. God has done wrong with me. I went out full. I come back empty. I got to, what's Ruth's story? She's a Moabite. She, she's cursed under the law. Her family's cursed under the law. Her people are cursed under the law. And she came out of Moab. And they came to Bethlehem, house of bread. Beth, house, Lehem, bread. In the beginning of barley harvest. This would be spring. This would be Abed, the first month. Do you know what happens on Abed 14th? That's when the Passover land is killed. Isn't that interesting? Now, I don't know what date you, it just says the beginning, of, that would be Abed. I'm not going to give no dates, but. And I would think that the harvest and all that, you have to check, is around the 14th. Look at that. Abed marks the beginning of the Jewish people when they came out of Egypt. Ruth 
Abed marks her coming out of Moab. How's that for a story? How is that? God is so great. The word of God is so 